You are watching a Modern Air Combat Environment tutorial video made on behalf of Battlespace Simulations by Close Air Solutions. Here is a brief overview of what we will cover in this tutorial video. The nine line form in MACE is accessed from the Entity Control tab on the top menu ribbon. You can open up to four of them and pre-fill them in for use at any point in the mission dependent on your MACE license. The nine line form will not perform an attack unless you press the Attack Without IP or Attack Via IP button. The nine line form is based on the standard CAS brief format for NATO. You will notice that it contains four main sections. The nine line section is where you can enter all the information usually associated with a real nine line attack. You do not have to fill out every field in the nine lines to conduct an attack. The lines that are essential for the attack already contain default values such as ingress altitude and egress details. These, along with the IP drop-down, will affect the flight of your chosen aircraft and are marked with a red asterisk to remind you of this. An IP is not essential for an attack and as such is not filled in with a default value. More on IPs later. The Approach and Delivery section contains information for the weaponeering of the attack, such as the final attack heading, the attack distance at which the weapon is to be released, a strafe distance, which denotes the distance between bullets across the ground, a number of weapons to be fired, and the time between the release of each weapon. The parameters above the Air Assets section affect all aircraft. The parameters for the individual aircraft flight profiles are set below in the Air Assets section. Here you can choose up to four separate aircraft that may attack different targets from different attack profiles using different weapons. This area allows the user to individually clear the aircraft hot and to abort individual aircraft. Finally, there is the Timing slash Initiation section where you can set the time on target and the time to target or commence attacks immediately with or without an IP. You may also command a re-attack here and allow attacks on the reciprocal of the attack heading specified in the approach and delivery section. The first thing to do is to decide what aircraft will be conducting the attack. You can choose from a list of available aircraft in the drop-downs contained in the Air Assets section at the bottom of the form. To clear an asset, click the red X icon. You can choose up to four aircraft to conduct the attack using different weapons and delivery profiles and individual PRF for laser weapons. If multiple air assets are selected for the attack, then they will space themselves based on the asset spacing value in the Approach and Delivery section. When you choose an asset, the box to the right will auto-populate with whatever weapons are loaded on the chosen aircraft. The next task is to select what weapon you want from the drop-down. The box to the right of it will populate with the available attack profiles for that weapon and aircraft. MACE supports level, dive, pop and loft profiles. The attack will override to a dive regardless of pitch selection if a gun munition is selected. If the selected pitch is level, then the operator can further specify the distance of the final attack leg. If not, the final attack leg distance is calculated automatically from the ingress altitude. The next step is to populate the target's location box. It is key to understand how the target location is handled by this form, so we'll spend a short time on this now. 
a target location can be transferred to this box from the 9 line at the top of the form by pressing the arrow next to line 6. Or, you can type the target location straight into the aircraft target box. Or, you can pick a target location from the mission area by pressing the target button to the right of the box and then clicking on the map. Or, you can select from available entities within the drop down. Now then, if you pick an actual entity in the mission using either the target button or the drop down, you will see the target location, but also you will see the entity name in brackets next to that location. By selecting an entity as a target in this way, if it moves, the target location will be updated dynamically in the 9 line form. Once a target has been selected, if you are to select the attacking aircraft on the mission area, you will see the red targeting line extending from the aircraft to the target. You can also adjust the target position of the aircraft you are controlling by using the camera or pod view. To do this, you must select the aircraft in the mission area and then use the bottom lock button in the view tab of the top menu bar to lock the camera to the selected aircraft. If you move the camera and then re-lock it, this will update the position in the 9 line also. I will now insert a second aircraft into the attack form and have it attack a different target with a different weapon from a different profile for us to see. So, we have selected aircraft, the weapon, the profile and the target position. All we have to do now is give some ingress and egress details. As we heard earlier, there is data that affects flight that must be processed by MACE in order to conduct the attack. These are ingress altitude, egress altitude, egress direction and distance, or an egress point. Remember, these parameters affect all of the aircraft selected in the air assets section. The altitudes can be specified as above sea level or above ground level. You can specify a different altitude for ingress or egress. For ingress, if there is no IP start point specified in MACE, then MACE will pick up the attack heading before release. If an IP is specified, then MACE will send the aircraft via that point and then pick up the final attack heading. For egress, you can specify a point similar to the IP or a heading and distance from the target. Finally, the last required flight parameter is the final attack heading. This is the heading to the target. I can now select any additional weapons parameters I want, such as the attack release range, strafe distances, etc. And then I'm able to execute the attack. We will discuss timed attacks later. For now, I simply want to execute. I have the choice of either going via the IP, which in this case I haven't specified, so we won't use that one, or to attack without IP, which I'll select. When I execute, note that the aircraft involved in the attack will have a small 9 annotation in the lower left-hand corner of its icon. You can now see in the MACE mission area that MACE has formed a waypoint path to the target with the final track aligned with the final attack heading specified in the form. At this point, all the aircraft will do is fly the profile specified. It will not release the weapons until I clear it hot in the air assets section. 
You see underneath the aircraft in the form it states waiting for clearance until I press the clear hot button and then it changes to cleared hot. MACE dynamically updates the time to target and after weapon release the weapon time of flight. After the attack, the aircraft proceeds to the egress point you specified and sets up an orbit at that point, at the altitude that you specified. We can perform the attack again with exactly the same parameters by hitting the re-attack button. There is a useful option here to allow a reciprocal heading in the re-attack, which can be very useful for expediting effects on targets that can be attacked from that direction. I'll demo the re attack, but this time I will abort the first aircraft. You can see that once I press the abort button, the aircraft proceeds straight to the egress point that you specified in the nine line form. I will now demonstrate the use of known points in MACE 9 line attacks. Known points can be used for a multitude of functions, but here I will use them to specify the ingress and egress points for an attack. Known points are added from the Mission Builder tab in the top menu bar, under the Sites drop down. They come under the Other Sites subcategory. You can change the known points properties like you do with most entities in MACE by right clicking on one. You can give them a call sign and this is what will show up in the drop downs in the MACE 9 line forms. You can also label them so they show up on the mission area at all times. Also here I'd like to cover the adding of weapons to a platform. This is made possible by selecting the platform properties in the normal way, right clicking on the platform in the mission area. Scroll to the bottom of the platform properties window and click the weapons button. You can add any number of weapons using this form. Now if I construct a nine line, this time I will choose an IP for the start point and egress point. This time, instead, to execute the attack, I'll hit the attack with IP button. You see that MACE routes the aircraft via the IP, and also because we selected a known point for the egress, MACE will route there, instead of the cardinal and distance we specified in the previous attack. If I was to abort the attack now, on this run-in the aircraft will then proceed to the known point we specified for the egress and hold there. Now I'd like to quickly cover the show of force. The attack is broadly set up in the same way as for all nine lines, except you don't need to worry too much about the weaponing and weaponeering and delivery options. As a minimum, you need to select an aircraft and a target position and specify a final attack heading. Then you can just hit the show of force button. MACE sets up waypoints for the show of force ignoring any IP specifications. The aircraft will start a descent on its turn onto the final attack heading to around 200 feet above ground level. 
you can dispense flares on the run-in from the nine line form directly by pressing the flares button next to the aircraft in the air assets section. Once past the target, the aircraft routes to its egress point and climbs back up to the egress altitude. Here is the summary of what we covered in this tutorial video.